Hey lads, I wanted to start a new vlog. It's the weekend. Tom and I are just chilling. We're feeling a lot better, which is nice. And um, I've got my cup of tea and I thought I would tell you what I'm reading at the moment. So for some reason I'm on a real big non-fiction binge. So I just finished Good Talk by Mira Jacob, which is a graphic novel I've honestly been meaning to get to for like years but it's always out at my library and then to buy a copy in the UK for some reason it's like really expensive so I just haven't got around to it and I was browsing on Scribd at like 5am last night when I couldn't sleep I'm having a really bad bout of insomnia at the moment so that's fun but um and I saw it on there and I thought oh I could get into reading like I could I'm in the mood for some reason to read a graphic novel I think I've only read like two maybe in my life and none in recent memory I don't own any and I loved it. So it's a, it's called like a memoir and conversation. It's a story of um, Mira Jacobs and her family. She is a child of two Indian immigrants. And so she's Indian American and she's married to a white Jewish man. And it flits between her life growing up and her experiences being a novelist. And then the um, 2016 election of Donald Trump and explaining that to her mixed race son. It really, um, took me by surprise how much I was emotionally invested in it. The art style, I'll like put up a, a picture here, you can see, is really interesting. And I wouldn't say like it's aesthetically like my vibe, but I really liked what she was doing with the collaging. And I think it really made sense for the novel. I think um, the memoir, I think it's particularly a really interesting read, like following last week's attack on the White House and all of the information we have going around about um, white supremacy and those violent actions because she talks about the experience of having a loved one who wants to support trump and i don't know i just i think it was like more pertinent than ever and um, in the flashbacks when she's talking about her life growing up she features 9 11 um and the fallout from that and explaining that to her son i think that was also really interesting especially to explain to someone who didn't live through 9 11 i find when i'm teaching and i it's like a memory that's really anchored in my mind for a, quite a random reason that my mom's birthday was 9-11 um so when I'm teaching and explaining like world news or events to people to children in my class I always draw on that one and then I remember that the children I teach weren't alive when 9-11 happened so I don't know I just found that really interesting from the child's perspective as well but yeah I would highly recommend it and if you're a script member I'll put my link down below if you guys aren't because you can have a month free with um that it doesn't cost you like I didn't get money for it. I just get a free month myself I think but um yeah I really enjoyed it so I'm gonna pick up another non-fiction book which is gonna be the second in Deborah Le Levy's living autobiography and it's the cost of living and um I loved the first one what I don't want you to know I think it's called and this one is all about her experiences being a single mum while also being a writer so I'll get started on that and then tell you what else I'm doing Look at him. Ah, he's so cute. I'm about to bake a loaf of my sourdough. If you guys are interested in baking sourdough, I will link the person I follow down below. But um, if you're not, just enjoy this montage of a beautiful loaf of bread that's gonna smell fucking fantastic.
moment of truth, lads. Oh, she's a beauty. She's a beauty. Tom's making pasta and I baked a loaf. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells incredible. That's my pasta. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm vlogging down here because we took our mirror off the wall so we could have our projector. We've got my loaf of bread. I'm off for a walk. A government mandated walk with a friend, which I'm so excited I haven't seen her before Christmas. So I'm going to deliver her this loaf of bread and get a coffee and I'll show you some sea views on the way. We'd only be in the car. Folks, um, I thought I'd come on here because honestly I'm procrastinating doing work. I'm already sick so I'm drinking kombucha because I obviously think that's going to help. Probably won't but we try. Um, I'm trying this new method of working. It's not going so well but <laughs> I haven't tried it for that long but I thought I'd tell you about it in case you're interested in finding new ways to work from home that I'm going to like instead of normally I like work for four hours and then like burn out have like two hours in the middle of the day where I really don't do anything and then like guilt myself into doing more work in the afternoon but today I'm trying this like burst strategy like 20 minutes on not a half an hour on like 10 minutes off like this which probably doesn't mean I do that much work but like in the breaks I'm not like sitting down and just staring at my phone because I'm sure you guys are with me I'm wasting so much time doing that but I'm like doing like washing or like going to fold my clothes and like stuff like chores I have to do basically throughout the day instead of like doing all my work and then doing all my chores um but yeah that's probably really fucking boring information oh no my straw just split in half what wow that's the kind of week we're having guys no, can confirm, doesn't like them more. But anyway, I'm here to tell you about The Cost of Living by Deborah Livy. I've only read the first 30 pages, but I love her. I love her. She's so articulate without being pretentious. Um, I've already folded down like four pages, but I wanted to read this book that I read to Tom last night about the idea of um, like running a household as a woman. So we start and we find out about her. She starts with this metaphor of leaving leaving a boat and deciding whether to stay on the boat and watch it sink or to swim away, like a representation of her marriage. Um, but I loved this bit so much. To strip the wool of the fairy tale of the family house in which the comfort and happiness of men and children has been the priority is to find behind it an unthanked, unloved, neglected and exhausted woman. It requires skill, time, dedication and empathy to create a home that everybody enjoys and functions well. Above all else, it is an act of immense generosity to be the architect of everyone else's well-being. This task is still mostly perceived as women's work. Consequently, there are all kinds of words used to belittle this huge endeavour. If the wife and the mother has been impregnated by society, she must play everybody's mother. She has built the story on the old patriarchy that has been designed for the nuclear heterosexual family. Wow. Could anyone sum up the emotional labour of being a woman and deciding to run a family home more than that? Yeah, I just think she's a beautiful writer and I'm loving it so far, so I'm excited to get to that. Also appreciate that it's like very large font and very well spaced. So we're always here for that. But yeah, I haven't decided to pick up a story yet. Um, I'm just enjoying this and I will let you know when I finish it. Besides that, there probably won't be many other clips the rest of the day because I am just working and tidying. From video. <laughs> oh no. We're watching football, which I don't care about, but we must celebrate an occasion where we are sitting at our dining table, which happens probably the last time was Christmas Day. God, that's tragic, isn't it? But shout out to the shepherd's pie. Shout out to you.
We're on the sofa. <laughs> He's upset. I'm eating apple crumble. This is for all of my non-UK followers. Tell me, do you eat apple crumble? <laughs> Tom's upset that I'm filming this. Why are you laughing? What is this for? The vlog. Oh, my. We love apple crumble in this house, don't we? Yeah, well, this is... You know, that little exchange, this is a kind of very authentic... Uh... <laughs> you're ruining it! <laughs> Don't be an arsehole. Tell the people what you're reading. I'm reading a book called Larry's. Let's see. Oh, this is my proof that you've stolen, I see. Yes. How do you like it? Yes, yeah, good. Dark? Fucked up? Yeah, well, it's very intense, um, very violent. Does it speak to you as a man? Mm, not really, because I'm not particularly <laughs> hyper-aggressive. Good to know. But I think, yeah, it's quite an interesting... What about the small town culture? culture? Yeah, I mean, that's... So, I recognise that from Night Out in Somerset. <laughs> Big ups to uh, <laughs> Palace Nightclub Bridgewater. Fantastic. We um, should have one of those. In well, just, yeah, anyone that grows up in, like, going to, like, provincial nightclubs and stuff, just that... Nothingness. Yeah, just that nothingness and the, how, how you fill that void. Interesting. And just the kind of... I think the hatred that festers in... Destitution. Well, no... Yeah, yeah that in destitute places amongst men that don't they don't know through what other means to kind of articulate express, yeah. express it. and it just it manifests itself in this kind of hatred of women and hatred of each other and just like toxicity yeah it's yeah toxic is the word oh mm. interesting i think i will read it maybe when i feel less depressed howdy folks Oh my god, my kitchen looks so messy. People comment on my last vlog like, wow, your flat's so nice, like thanks for showing it. And then I show you shit like this and my kitchen's so messy. It's because we're cleaning the dishwasher, like doing a side filter. Everything's on the side. But anyway, I'm coming in to tell you that I'm making lunch, my favorite lunch that me and Tom actually haven't made in ages. And it is um, like homemade barbecue beans. They're like very, what I imagine to be very American never eaten them when I went to America but um they're basically like homemade baked beans but like being like a spicy mustardy tomatoey sauce and I love them I haven't made them in ages and they're also really good like on jacket potatoes or on toast so yeah I'm making those and I thought I would also tell you while I'm cooking I normally always audio book because it is a rare sight to see me cooking normally this is definitely Tom's territory but um, he's like doing a course, so I'm doing it. Need a little bit of sugar in there to sweeten. I'm also just definitely eyeballing this, but I will link the recipe. It's Minimus Baker, who I love her um, vegan recipes. I feel like they're really good. But she also has some non vegan stuff. Anyway, I started listening to um, it's called Acid for Children, and it is the memoir of Flea, who is one of the people, one of the men in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I don't know if I've actually ever mentioned on here that I'm a huge Red Hot Chili Peppers fan. Like I have been since I was like, I don't know, 12. And it's actually like one of the roundabout reasons Tom and I met was through because of our love, mutual love for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So anyway, they're very nostalgic to me and I just really love them as a band. So I thought I would give their, um, his memoir ago. I haven't read an Anthony's one, but my best friend read it and loved it. But I think it's quite dark. Um, but yeah, he's such a beautiful writer. Who knew? I mean, I think, does he write some of the songs for the Chilies? Yeah. Yeah, and he's like a classically trained champion. Yeah. So he um, is regaling his story of growing up in first New York and then on to LA. Um, experience with having parents who are addicts and um like quite a turbulent youth but yeah he's just such a beautiful writer and he opens every um every chapter with like a, a quote and we've had 
Proust, we've had um, Bell Hooks. I don't know, I just really like it, and I was, it's like unexpected. I don't read a lot of music memoirs. Tom does a lot more than me, but I just really fancy a story, and yeah, I'm really loving it so far. So we'll update you when we're doing that. We're just getting into his like teenage years where he like falls in with a group of people and starts um, shoplifting. So that's good, <laughs> but it's really interesting. But um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm making lunch and then I will catch up with you later about picking out a fiction book to start this evening. Tom made another banging dinner. We have, I don't know how you pronounce it, do you? Goff. Goshwang. Goshwang. Aubergine tempeh on brown rice with an aggressive amount of pickles. Pickle ginger. And edamame. And a cute boyfriend. Um, and gin and tonics, because it's a long week already. But yeah, I will link the recipe down below. Because this looks so good. Oh, I need my glasses on. Those of people commented in my last video, like, so nice to see your flat. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And then I'm showing you, like, my old towels hanging up. And I just shut the door because my washing machine's back there. But um, it's so dark. Let me show you what it's like outside right now. This is outside my bedroom window. But it, like, almost looks like it's snowing. I mean, it's a very beautiful view. These sadly aren't my stairs. I would love to be able to climb on them. But it's so grim outside, there's like no daylight and I can't take any good pictures for the, um, the vlog for Instagram. It's really annoying, but um, I'm also got the heating on because I'm trying to dry some clothes, so hence why I'm wearing a vest top. Anyway, wow, you're rambling, Hannah. Um, I'm here to tell you about what I'm reading. Okay, so I finished... Um, the Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. Loved it. Love Deborah Levy's nonfiction. Fantastic. She's just a genius. I read you a piece that I already read. I've thumbed like half of it down. Don't know how to sum up my review. Basically, it's so London, which I love. I know like lots of people from different places have um, like find books about London quite dry and annoying, which I can understand because our publishing industry is so London centric. But as someone who grew up near and around London and like can name lots of the landmarks that she's talking about because Levy um, ends up moving right near where one of my best friends lives now. Um, so I was like really familiar with all of the North London references that she was making, but she's just really clever. She weaves in some really fantastic literary criticism and she talks about writing and motherhood and the confliction between having a life that's worth meaning and if your meaning is constructed by something outside of yourself, like having children, then what does that mean when those things disappear? And yeah, she's fabulous. Like on a sentence level, I love her. Um, and I want to read more of her fiction because I've only read Swimming Home and it didn't like do that much for me. But I have hot milk on my shelf, so I will probably get to that in the next couple of months. Okay, then I read, I had a foray into NetGalley. If you guys don't know what NetGalley is, it's like a publishing proof website where you can access e-publications early like proofs of books before they come out but like you can access them on your ipad or your kindle i've never done it before because i'm not much of an e-reader but because since i got scribd i've been reading way more on my ipad and it's quite good at night when tom falls asleep because it's like lit so i can read really early in the morning or really late at night i'm having i think i already mentioned this vlog like a really bout of in bad bouts of insomnia um, that like comes with my health sometimes so that's been good so I've devoured a 320 page book in the last 24 hours that I got on Scribd um that I got on NetGalley it's called Insatiable by Daisy Buchanan and I like Daisy Buchanan she's a uh, like a writer like literary person she's written a couple of memoirs about like sisters which I haven't read because I don't have sisters <laughs> um and also she had a podcast called Your Booked which was really funny but I really didn't like this. It was like trying to be a literary, very sexy and filthy Fifty Shades of Grey type thing, but it just, it wasn't pulled off for me. At first I was enjoying the, it's a very specific middle-class millennial context of London. She's, you know, referencing Soho House and Nanette Boots and these things that are like 
very specific cultural markers to I imagine what some of her audience would recognise. In the same ilk that Dolly Alderton does, but I found this way more irritating and then the writing just not as polished. Um, so yeah, I was disappointed overall with that one, to be honest, but I will wrap it up in my, I think I'm gonna do a mid-month wrap up because shockingly I've read like eight books this year already, which is obscene. I need to get a life and, um, I need to get a life, basically. Um, then I started um, this, which was on my TBR for January, and it's The Private Joys of Nena Maloney. Um, Grace loved this, and I mentioned before, I saw the author, the author interviewed, and I'm really enjoying it so far. We're in 90s Cambridge, and we're with a group of evangelical Christians. You guys know how I feel about cult religion. It's, it's my catnip, it's my life. So I'm loving that, and then we're moving to like 2009 Manchester. And it's a story of black girlhood and the experience of being mixed race. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm only like 50 pages in, so I will update you when I've read some more. I'm also hoping for some really exciting book posts this week. So when that comes in, I will hit you up with that. You filmed me. But it will have music over it. For the first time, I think in 2021 on the vlog, I have real clothes on. This is shocking. Hi, Tom. <laughs> in the background. I'm going to work um, to teach children, hence why I look nice for once. But anyway, I thought I would tell you about my reading update. So I feel like I've got a lot of chaotic reading energy at the moment. So I am still ooh, reading. The Private Joys of Nena Maloney. I'm really enjoying it. I'm only 100 pages in. It's reminding me weirdly of Bernadette Evaristo, not necessarily in its particular stylized voice. I wouldn't say it's not as sharp as Evaristo, but in the like ease of the prose where you're falling into the story and it's not necessary sentence by sentence, you're beautifully struck by the words, but it's very... I don't know, just tangible and like you can really feel these characters and you're, I can really visualise the situation. It was published by Dialogue Books, but I didn't mention that before, he published Rainbow Milk, which is one of my favourites of last year. So I love what they're doing. I love the publisher, Charmaine, love Grove. She is just phenomenal and I love everything she does at Dialogue. So yeah, that's that one. And then I started last night because really enjoying reading two physical books and my audio book at the moment, like having a physical non-fiction and I'm just on an essay binge after I read Melissa Broder's in my last one, then I did that graphic novel, which I enjoyed. Anyway, this is Strangers, Essays on the Human and the Non-Human by Rebecca Tamas. This is Tom's book that I borrowed from him. It's the cutest size. It's like very square and has the stickers cover. It's a very beautifully um, produced book, if you see. That's every title of an essay. And it's, it's about the Anthropocene. It's about the climate emergency. It's talking about our position in late capitalism and our connection to non-human beings um it's really interesting it's quite academic i would say in places but i really loved the one on um i earmarked it for you can't find it the pink one on watermelon and this um discussion of a state of emergency and this idea that we often see perpetuated in the mainstream media that the climate emergency has just occurred now where it's actually been a build-up of things happening over an extremely long period of time that we can date back to and link to um, transatlantic slavery. And I really enjoyed reading about that connection. Um, and it just says like, this is a manifestation. The current climate emergency is just a manifestation of equality, inequality. And it's this whole discussion about inequality and its various ways that it's perpetuated in society, whether that's gender, class, race, or the um, impacts we see on the global south, whereas the global north are the biggest polluters of the planet. So yeah, definitely if you're interested in climate change, climate science, all those kind of conversations about meta environmental philosophy, that vibe, then this might be for you. Lads, does anyone else go to the supermarket for one thing? Doesn't take a bag. And then comes out with fucking oven chips. I don't even need oven chips. I was just tempted by the crinkle fries. I'm in that like comfort eating mode. Anyway, 
that's what I'm doing right now is um queuing out supermarket and my hand is now frozen from oven chips and cherries but um I'll catch you when I get home Hi guys, long time no speak. I took a break off of the vlog because I um, had a bit of a health scare and on last week. Um, this is just a message to say that please stay at home. The coronavirus is so, so serious right now. We couldn't get an ambulance because there was um, not enough in our area. So that was pretty terrifying. I'm on the mend now and I've just got loads of painkillers and antibiotics to take. But yeah, I haven't really been doing much reading to be honest, but I thought I came, I was um, obviously away and now I've come back home and I've got loads of books to show you that I'm really excited about and that really cheered me up getting some book mail so I thought I would share with you some wonderful publishers that have sent me some lovely things and then later this afternoon I will do a catch up with what I've read or haven't read while I've been away and then wrap up this blog. So the first thing I got sent was a copy of Fake Accounts by Laura Euler. This was in my... Um, most anticipated books of like the coming quarter. Uh, it's published by Fourth Estate and it's um, about a online conspiracy theorist boyfriend and um, Trump era politics and all that kind of stuff. It's like very smart, witty in the vein of Jenny Offal or Sheila Hetty, those type of um, self-aware female writers. CGA just read this and loved it. So I'm really excited to get to this, although I think it requires a lot of brain power, maybe more than I have right now. The next one, I got a beautiful finished copy from Bloomsbury and that is Asylum Road by Olivia Sujek. I don't know if I did feature this in my most excited um, releases, but I am very excited for this one because I loved um, Olivia Sujek's non-fiction essay on um, it, it, on like being a female artist and a female writer. It's called Exposure. It's like one of the most perfect explanations of anxiety that I've ever read in my life and this connection with anxiety and online life. But... This is her, and I've never read one of her novels, but this is her latest, and it's a story of tension between a couple driving to a wedding in south of France, um, and I think it's going to be, it's a slight and unsettling, a story of the, bo the borders that govern our lives between men, women, assimilation, otherness, nations and families. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one, and it's one I think my mum's also going to love. I was chuffed to get a finished copy. One that I requested from the publisher was from Charco Press, and um, this is going towards one of my reading goals of the year which if you watch that video if not I will link it up in the cards about um reading more from Latin America and stories translated from Spanish so this is Carlos Suez's Havana Year Zero translated by Christina Maxwindy and this is a story of um the um 1959s who like late 1970s in Cuba the revolution and the experiences of people living there it says it's um taking into account the stories of science and literature at the events of 1959. The characters move between romance and simulations in search of their something to prove that life in Havana has not come to a halt. So yeah I'm really excited I think it's like set in the 90s and then we go back and forth but yeah also a beautiful cover. Then I got another finished copy of one of my um, most anticipated releases and that is We Are All the Birds of Uganda by Hass. Hafas, Hafas Zane, and um, this is published by Murky Books, who is Stormzy's imprint over at Penguin. I love what they are doing over there. I'm so excited to read this. It's a dual timeline between 1970s Uganda and the story of the revolution and the dictatorship over there and um, present day London. So yeah, I'm really looking to forward to this one. I've seen some really rave reviews, you know, discussing all the things I'm interested in, geopolitics, um, you know, choice, agency, um nationality all those sorts of things so yeah that one will be amazing and then i got two sent to me from pushkin press this one i requested which i'm really excited about and i haven't had anyone talk about it and it's called little gods by meng jin and this is um uh, another dual timeline which i believe i said i didn't like but i only don't like them when they switch back to like the 18th century but this one is about um the tiananmen square massacre and a baby is born on that night and then we live the life of the mother in the Tiananmen Square and then over to America where the um, daughter is now living and she goes back to China to chase her roots. I definitely want to read more about China and especially uh, like contemporary literature around Tiananmen Square and the following like cultural revolution all those sorts of things I find extremely interesting so I'm excited for that one. Then they also sent me a Swedish translation called My Brother by Karen Smirnoff. This one I think my mum will actually love and we were talking 
when she was looking after me while I was sick, we were talking about um, Swedish noir books and things like that. And it says he knows nothing about me except I murdered his father, but I guess everybody knows that. So yeah, I'm very um, looking forward to reading that one. And I would love to read translations from Sweden. So yeah, that's all of the wonderful book mail I came home to, which really pleased my day when I was dosed up on lots of uh, painkillers, but I will be sure to feature those in future videos and um, I will get back to you later in the day with what I've read while I've been away. I'm fearful that this is the longest vlog I've ever put up. Please may you guys comment below how you feel about long vlogs, like what's your ideal length to watch because I can split them up and do like two weekly vlogs and they'll be more like 20 minutes each, but my issue is I don't read like that much in that time period sometimes. So then they're not really like super about like loads of books, but please can you just, yeah, I'd love some feedback on the vlogs. Anyway, I should stop rambling because I'm increasing this. So while I was away, I finished um, Acid for the Children by Flea. That's his memoir. He is the bass player of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I think I already mentioned I'm a huge Red Hot Chili Peppers fan. And this was surprisingly beautiful. Not that I was unexpected because he obviously wrote some of the lyrics to lots of the famous Red Hot Chili Peppers songs. So I knew that he could write. But it's very earnest and um, it basically documents his childhood and his life in LA right up until he joins the Chili's and the Chili's get famous. So it's not really a memoir of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But he lived a very turbulent life. There's a lot of trigger warnings for drug use, like excessive, excessive drug use. But he talks about his friendship with Anthony Kiedis and their blossoming love for each other and uh, living with parents that are addicts. And yeah, he he read the audiobook and he was getting choked up when he talked. He had a lot of friends that he lost to drug overdose or lots of different reasons. And he gets choked up when he talks about people in his life that have passed away. And it's so, so beautiful on audio. And I just, I can't can't recommend an audio read by the writer like of their own memoir more like it's my favorite thing ever so yeah I finished that and then I started reading um I wasn't really doing much reading holding a book that was making me feel quite dizzy so I was reading on my iPad and I was reading I need to tell you now can't remember it's a Chloe Caldwell um essay collection that was recommended by my friend CJ when I said I wanted something more like Marissa Melissa Broder that like messy brand woman vibe it's called um i'll tell you in person it's that yellow one there and i'm not i i've sort of like stopped i've got 40 pages left so i probably will finish it but it's not up to much she talks about using heroin as if that's the most casual thing in the world so i was speaking to my american friends about that and they said i think it is more common of a drug use than it is in the uk but i don't know like her flippant attitude towards drugs and i don't know i just got quite pissed off with her like another white like cis like straight sized body person talking about I don't know I just didn't really need that and it kind of jarred me um some of the topics she was discussing but yeah that's my thoughts on that I might try another one of her essay collections um but yeah that's all I read and then I'm about halfway through the private joys of Nana Maloney I'm not going to finish it anytime soon to be honest because my brain is confuddled, but I am really enjoying it. So you will see that in another video. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.